for the most part, I'm going to follow the instructions in the Tilly and the Buttons booklet that comes with your pattern. But because I'm going to add pockets, we're going to tackle that first because that's an additional thing to what's given in the instructions. If you don't fancy doing the pockets, that's fine. You can skip forward onto the next step. So I've got my four pocket pieces here that are in two pairs, kind of looks like a butterfly. There are a few different ways of doing inseam pockets. I'm going to talk you through what I think is the easiest way. The first thing that we need to do is to take each piece and we're going to finish these curved edges so that they don't fray. And we're gonna do all four, one at a time. If you've got an overlocker, you can use an overlocker to go around these edges. If you don't have an overlocker, we're gonna use the zigzag stitch on our sewing machine. So I'm gonna set those to one side because I'm gonna pop them under my overlocker in just a sec. And I'm gonna show you on a scrap of fabric how you would do a zigzag stitch just to finish off the edge. And that's gonna stop it from fraying. I'm going to show you on a scrap of fabric how you're going to do your zigzag stitch if you don't have an overlocker. This is a great way of finishing off your raw edges so that they don't get too frayed. Um, just pop your presser foot down with your fabric underneath it so that you're quite near the edge of your fabric and practice on a scrap first to get all your settings how you need them to be. Um, I've set my machine to a zigzag stitch. I'm just everything else threaded up normally with a normal tension and a universal needle. And um, I've set it to the zigzag stitch. The default on my machine is for a width of five and a length of two. And I'm just going to sew right along the edge of the fabric. And can you see if I go a bit slowly there, you can see that needle jogging over from side to side, just hugging the edge of my fabric. And that is going to stop it from fraying. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to do that zigzag stitch right on the edge there um, of each of your four pocket bags. I'm going to go and overlock mine now and I should be back in a sec. I've got my overlocker set up. I'm using uh, three thread overlocking because I'm just edging something round. I'm not sewing two pieces together. I'm just neatening edges. And I'm just going to overlock around the curved edge of the pocket. The straight edge I'm going to leave because that's going to be overlocked or zigzagged with the trouser leg. Now, I didn't have enough navy threads or white threads to do all three spools in navy or white. So to be honest with you, I just choose whatever colours I think look pretty together and look nice with the fabric. You don't really have to buy um, three or four new spools of thread every time you're overlocking. Just use what you've got. As long as they're all the same quality and the same make, the same weight, that should be fine. Um, and also, you don't want to keep having to re-thread your overlocker, so um, I keep my machine threaded, uh, my sewing machine, and I don't want to have to keep switching those over because, as we all know, it's not that much fun threading an overlocker, <laughs> unless you're very technically minded. So I'm going to just go around this curved edge here now. Um, there we go. I'm not cutting anything off. So I'm just lining my fabric up with the edge there. Just to make sure it's nice and flat. Keeping my fingers well back. to attach my pocket bags to my trouser legs. Now I've taken the front trouser legs and I've laid those down on my table in front of me with the right side looking up at me. This curved edge here is the centre front of the trousers and then these are your side seams, the long ones running down the outside leg. These are the outside leg seams. You obviously want your pocket to go on the outside. You want that to be on the, the side of your leg, not at the front. <laughs> so you're going to put these pocket bags here and here. And you want them to be laying right sides together. So you're looking at the right side of the fabric of your trouser leg and you're looking at the wrong side 
of your pocket bag and that means that right sides are touching. You want to measure from the top edge down 10 centimetres and that is where your pocket bag is going to start. So to come down 10, make a pin there. And the reason why you're coming down 10 is because you're leaving space at the top to make your waistband. So the top of the pocket starts 10 centimetres down from that top edge there. And I'm just going to put some pins in to hold that together. And you want to make sure that you've got the correct pocket piece because you want your pocket to be facing down that way. So this curve is going down towards the hem. Repeat exactly the same on the other front leg. So come 10 centimetres down from the top. Do, do, do. And just pin my pocket back there. Right sides together. And the pocket is facing down. And you can see that what I'm creating here is a mirror image of these are my two front legs. Once I've done this, I'm going to do exactly the same process on the back legs. I'm going to pin those pocket pieces onto the back legs. So I'm going to, I've done the front, I'm going to do exactly the same to the back. Then what I'm going to do is take this edge from my machine and just a centimetre in from the edge, I'm going to sew that pocket bag to the trouser leg. Trouser legs here all pinned up with the pockets and one at a time I'm just going to pop them under my machine and just sew those pockets to the trouser legs. I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric with the one centimetre line or you can, you know, as long as your the seam allowance on this pattern is 1.5 centimetres, as long as it's less than that you're fine. So you can line up with the edge of your foot or you can line up with the one centimetre line. I'm just using a normal straight stitch and I'm pressing the pedal for my overlocker. <laughs> I've got everything set up all together here. Right, that, this should work. So I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches. Take pins out as I go. now sewn together with a one centimetre seam allowance. I'm going to do that for all four. I've now attached all four of my pocket bags to all four of the outside legs of my trouser legs. The next thing to do is to finish off that outside leg by either zigzagging or overlocking. I'm going to overlock mine. So I'm just going to go all the way down here when I get to the bit where the pocket is attached, I'm going to be attaching both together so that you've got one nice, um, evenly finished overlocked seam that's not going to fray. And I'm going to do this on all four of the outside leg seams. my outside leg seams, got my two back legs and my two front legs and each of them have got their pocket bags attached. The next stage is just to go over to your ironing board and you're going to press that seam that you've just overlocked, trim off any bits of uh, thread tails and then you're just going to take each pocket bag, fold it back and press it this way. Let me move that into the centre so that you can see. I'm going to press it this way nice and flat. So your seam is all this way and your pocket bag is pressed and folded that way. Same here on this one. So it should look like that where you've sewn it together. You're going to fold it back and you're going to press it here. This night needs to be nice and crisp with all your 
seam allowance pointing this way and same on the other side. Pressed my trouser legs and I'm now ready to do start the exciting um, bit which is to actually construct these pyjama legs. So I've got one of my back panels here, I know this is back because I've got the B for back, B, I'm going into young phonics there, the B for back. I've got a four year old so I'm used to saying B instead of B. So I've got the B for back written there and that's laid out in front of me with the print looking up at me and the pocket pressed that way. Then I'm going to get the front that matches up to the back. Now, worth mentioning that no, you've got four trouser legs, they're all different. You've got a left back and a right back, then a left front and a right front. And you just need to make sure that you match these up correctly. So you're going to know how they go together because I can tell, look, these definitely go together because the pockets are nice together. So this is the outside leg seam here. And these curves represent the roundabout seam that goes from your waist round underneath and back up to your back. So I know that these trouser legs are made for each other, front and back, with the pockets there and right sides together. So um, you should end up with one leg that looks like this and then the other leg should look like a mirror image of this. So what you want is to lay your trouser legs out so that they look like mine. The next thing to do is we're going to pin down this outside leg seam. But what we want to do is we want to leave a gap for your hand to go into your pocket. So we're going to start sewing at the top. I'll put the pin in there now. Matching those raw edges or the overlocked edges together. Can you see my cat? Hello. <laughs> Off you go. Go on. It's too much sunshine on this table. It's too tempting, isn't it? You want to sleep on my sewing. Then I'm going to sew down to one centimetre below the top edge of my pocket. You're going to sleep there, are you? Let's measure down one centimetre below the top edge of the pocket. Cats and sunshine and sewing. What? combination could possibly be better. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from the top, one seven point five centimetres in from the edge all the way down to this point here, um, which is one centimetre below the top of my pocket and I can put a little chalk mark in there just to tell myself where I'm going to stop sewing. So I want that chalk mark to be 1.5 in and from the edge and one centimetre down from the top of the pocket, roughly. So I'm going to sew from here down to here and do a back stitch and stop. Then I'm going to come down here and start sewing again. So from the top down to one centimetre below the top of that pocket and then I'm going to, oh, stop, excuse me, and I'm going to start sewing again nine centimetres up from the top. So measure from the bottom of your pocket and measure up nine centimetres and draw yourself a nice another pink or whatever colour chalk you're using. That needs to be 1.5 centimetres in from the edge and nine centimetres up from the bottom of your pocket. And you're gonna start, you can put a chalk dot to help you find it. And you're gonna sew from here down to here, back stitch, and then you're gonna start here again, do a back stitch and sew all the way down to your hem. And that means that this bit is open and this is the bit that your hand goes in for your pocket. So you've got a nice big opening to put your hand in there. So let's get that pinned now that Kira has decided to sleep on the chair instead of the table. <laughs> she thinks it's so fascinating, the sewing. What are you doing? <laughs> she probably won't like the noise of the overlocker in a minute too much. I always pin at right angles to the direction of sewing. It's easier to take the pins out. And it also means that your machine won't um, go onto a pin and break your needle. There we are. So we're going to sew from here to here, back stitch, and then come back here. In fact, I'll put a pin in there as well. Back stitch here, and then all the way down with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. And we're going to do that process on both of the trouser legs. I'm ready to sew my outside legs together. I'm going to pop my fabric under my machine, lower my presser foot 
and then I'm just looking to see that the edges of my fabric are lining up with the 15 millimeter line or 1.5 centimeter line which is five eighths of an inch and I'm gonna take the pins out as I go and I'm just gonna sew down here until I get to this pink dot um, which is a centimetre down from the top edge of the pocket. And I'll do a back stitch to begin with. Make sure that your pocket bags are facing outwards, that they're not accidentally folded up underneath. So I did a little back stitch there because I got to my pink dot and take that out and then pop it back under further down this time down to that second pink dot that I drew. Start off with a little backy back stitch. exactly the same on my other trouser leg but because I've had to flip this round my chalk marks are now on the wrong side so to transfer my chalk marks from one side to the other I'll put a pin through that pink chalk mark there and I'll just transfer it to that side and the same on the bottom one so that they're on the side that I'm looking at as I'm sewing. I've sewn the, side, the outside leg seam of both of my trouser legs so I now need to sew this pocket bag closed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at that point there where I finished sewing this seam from the waist down and I'm going to come all the way around the outside edge of the pocket bag and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to stop on this seam here. I don't want to overshoot and go beyond that seam because then I'll have a pleat and I don't want to go short of it because then I'll have a hole. So I'm going to start at that first pink dot, come all the way round, and I'm going to stop my needle just when it gets to that leg seam that I've just sewn there. Um, now some people might find it easier, in fact, just thinking about this. You might find it easier to start there and come all the way round and back up to there, because then you can hand wind that needle down to make sure that it just starts right on that stitch line there. Most important thing is that you don't want to overshoot here. You want to start finish on that line. So I've pinned together my two pocket bags, just secured them with a couple of pins and I'm just going to go around now and sew them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my trouser leg under there, twist it round because I'm going to sew around the edge here and I'm just going to put my foot down and I'm just going to look in there and I can see that I'm in the right place. And if I hand wind my needle, oh, my sewing machine's off. If I hand wind my needle down, I just wanna see that when my needle gets in there, it's going right on this seam here. And I'm just gonna do a couple of forward and back stitches. Nice and slow. And then I'm just gonna carry on round and don't worry, you can see my pocket bags don't absolutely perfectly match up. Doesn't matter too much. Um, you're just going to come in and go all the way around. Nice and slowly around the curve. If you need to, you can Make sure that your needle's down in the fabric, lift up your foot and swivel your pocket bag round a little bit. different ways of doing these inseam pockets but personally I find this is the simplest if it's the first time that you've done this. It's 
when you come back up to the top, make sure that your seam allowance is all folded that way. You don't want them to be folded back this way, and especially again underneath. Make sure that it's all pressed that way, that you've not got your seam allowance underneath accidentally folded back. If you overshoot it, you can always unpick those couple of stitches as long as you go back and do a back stitch to um, secure things. So you can now see I've come from here all the way round and finishing back there again. And this, when you open it up, has created that inseam pocket there. So that's the first one done. I'm going to do the second one and uh, we're going to then do the inside leg seams.